Preparing for section 8.2, we're going to go over applications of the normal distribution. In this question here, it says a study found that the mean amount of time cars spent in drive throughs of a certain fast food restaurant was 142.2 seconds. Assuming drive through times are normally distributed with a standard deviation of 25 seconds, we're going to complete parts A through D below. So the first question is asking us, what is the probability that a randomly selected car will get through the restaurant's drive through in less than 112 seconds? So um, the first thing we want to do is we to identify what is the, uh, the, the question that we're asking. So the question that we're asking is the following. It's saying, what is the probability that a randomly selected car will get through the restaurant's drive through in less than 112 seconds? So the first part here is that we want to find the probability that the value of x is going to be less than 112. Okay, so what we want to do is now we want to draw what this distribution would look like. So that means we're going to draw our bell curve. Okay, and what do we know? We know that the mean is 142.2. So we know the mean here is 142.2. And so we're looking at that value, which is 112 here. And we want to find the area that's to the left of 112. OK, so the next step is for us to do the following. What we want to do now is we want to find the z-score. We're going to convert this 112 to a z-score. So in order to do that, we need to know that x represents 112. We know that the mean is 142.2 and the standard deviation is 25. So we're going to use our formula to find the z-score. So the z-score is equal to x minus the mean over the standard deviation, which then gives us 112 minus 142.2. And we're going to divide that by 25. So let's see what that gives us on our calculator. So we're going to take 112 and then subtract 142.2 and then we're going to divide that by 25 and that gives us negative 1.208. Rounding that to two decimal places gives us negative 1.21. So therefore there is the z-score. It's negative 1.21. So now that we've converted this 112 into a z-score negative 1.21, now we can draw the standard normal distribution. So now we're going to have a bell curve that has a mean of 0. And now we're going to use the z-score of negative 1.21. And then we want to find the area that's to the left of that. Okay, so what we can do is, in order to find the probability of that, okay, and again, what we can do is remember that the probability of finding the value of x being less than 112 is the same thing as finding the probability of the z-score being less than negative 1.21, okay, which means that we want to find the area of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our table and we're looking for negative 1.21 so let's take a look for negative 1.21 so here's negative 1.2 let me minimize that so we have negative 1.2 and there's one so we can see what the probability is going to be here and that probability is 0.1131 so that means the area here is 0 0.1131, which is the same thing as that, 0 0.1131.
So that means that the area to the left of that, or meaning that the probability of x being less than 112 is going to equal 0 0.1131. Now, if I wanted to use StatCrunch, then I can open up StatCrunch, and then what I would do is I would come in here, and then I would say, okay, well, I'm going to go to Stat, and then I'm going to go to Calculators, and then I'm going to go down to Normal. And so, therefore, we know that the mean, since it's a standard normal distribution now that we've converted to a z-score, the mean is 0, standard deviation is 1, and we want to make sure that the z-score is going to be less than negative 1.21 and then we're going to compute and then we're going to get that area of 0 0.1131 okay so therefore that's going to give us that area and so using StatCrunch you can see that it's going to give us the following so there is our graph okay so this is using StatCrunch Now, if we wanted to use the calculator, let's go ahead and check that out. So if we want to use the calculator, then we're going to use normal CDF with the lower bound to the left, upper bound to the right, and then the mean and the standard deviation. So in our situation, the lower bound, since it's to the left, is going to be the negative 9999. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to come in here. We're going to take our calculator. Okay. And then we're going to go to second distribution. We're going to go to normal CDF since that's the cumulative. Press enter. We have negative 1 times e to the negative 9, 9, or we can put negative 9, 9, 9, 9. Okay, the upper bound is the value of the z-score, which is negative 1.21. We know our mean is 0. Our standard deviation is 1. Let's go ahead and paste that. And then there is our result. So we also get 0 0.1131 using the calculator. So therefore, then we can write our answer as 0 0.1131. Let's go ahead and put that answer into our value here. So rounding it to four decimal places, 0 0.1131. Let's check our result. And there is our answer. Now the next question wants us to find what is the probability that a randomly selected car will spend more than 175 seconds in the restaurant's drive through So in this case here, it's very similar. In this case now we're dealing with more than. So we're finding more than. So now we want to find the probability that X is going to be greater than 175. Okay. And so then what do we need to do? Well, we know that we're going to draw our distribution. So we want to draw what this would look like. So we know that we have our bell curve. Okay. We know that our mean is still 142.2. Okay. And now what we're doing is, is we're looking for the area that's to the right of 175. So here is 175. And then we want to find the area that's to the right of that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is, again, we want to create a z-score. So what is the z-score? Well, now we know that x is going to equal 175. We know that the mean is 142.2. And we know the standard deviation is 25. So let's go ahead and find the z-score. So the z-score, again, is x minus mu over the standard deviation. So Z is going to equal 175 minus 142.2. And then we're dividing that by the standard deviation. So let's go ahead and then find that on our calculator. So we're going to take 175 and then subtract 142.2 enter and then we're going to divide it by the standard deviation of 25 rounding this to two decimal places gives us 1.31 so 
So now we know that the z-score is going to be 1.31. Okay, so now that we found the z-score, now what we want to do is we're going to draw. So we know that the probability of x being less than 175 is now the same thing as the probability of the z-score being less than 1.31. So now by drawing this, we're going to have a similar picture knowing that our mean now is zero and we're going to use the z-score to be 1.31 and then we want to find the area that's to the right of that okay so what we want to do is if we're going to use the table then we need to find the area that's to the left of this okay and then we're going to take the value of 1 and then subtract whatever the area that is to the left of that using 1.31 as our z-score. So let's go down here and let's take a look at 1.31 on our table. So we know that 1.3 and there's 1 gives us a area of 0.9049. So this is 0 0.9049. So that means we're going to take 1 and subtract 0 0.9049. Okay, so if we take that 1 and then we subtract that, let's go ahead and find out what our probability is going to be. So we're going to take 1 and subtract 0.9049. And that gives us 0 0.0951. So 0 0.0, again, that was what, 951. So we can say that the probability that x is going to be greater than 175 is going to equal 0 0.0951. Now, if we wanted to use stack crunch, then we would do the following. We would use our normal calculator. Again, we want to make sure the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And now we want to find greater than the 1.31. So 1.31, and then let's take a look at that. And there is, if we round this to four decimal places, then we would get 0 0.0951. And so therefore that is using stack crunch. So there is that. Okay, and then again, if we want to use now our calculator, then we would do the following. We're going to go to, using the calculator, we're going to go to second distribution. We're going to go to normal CDF again. Now our lower bound is going to be 1.31. And then the upper bound is going to be towards infinity. So we can just put 9999 and then 0, 1, and then paste. And then let's press enter. And then there is our answer for the using the calculator. So then we would say that the probability that a randomly selected car that will spend more than 175 seconds in the restaurant's drive through is 0 0.0951. Let's verify that solution on my stat lab. So 0.0951. Let's go ahead and check our answer. And there is our result. Okay, now the next question says, what is the proportion of cars to spend between two and three minutes in the restaurant's drive through Okay, now keep in mind here that it's saying two and three minutes here. Okay, if you notice that our mean is in seconds and so is our standard deviation. So we have to convert two and three minutes into seconds. So first thing is, is if we take two and then multiply it by 60, then that's going to give us 120. And if we take three and then multiply that by 60, then that's going to give us 180. Okay, so that's seconds, right? So now we converted the minutes into seconds. And so now what we want to do is we want to find the probability, okay, that X is going to be in between 120 and 180. Okay, so what would this graph look like? 
Well, that means that we would have a bell curve. Okay, and what do we know about the mean again? Well, the mean is 142.2. Okay, and then we're saying we want to find the area that's in between 120 seconds and 180 seconds. Okay, so we want to find the area that's in between here. Okay, so in order to do that, now what we need to do is we need to find our Z scores. So we're going to have two Z scores now. Okay, so we know that X1 is going to equal 120. We know that X2 is going to equal 180. We know that the mean is 142.2. And we know the standard deviation is 25. So let's first find Z score 1, which is going to equal X1 minus the mean over the standard deviation. So that means we're going to take 120, subtract 142.2, and then we're going to divide that by 25. So that's going to represent Z1. Okay, and then just writing out the formula for Z2, it's going to be X2 minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we're going to take the value of 180, subtract 142.2 all over 25. Let me go ahead and then correct this here. This should say 142.2. Okay, and so let's go ahead and find our two z-scores using our calculator. So what we want to do now is we're going to take 120 and then subtract 142.2 and then we're going to divide that by 25 and we get rounding it to two decimal places is negative 0 0.89. So negative 0 0.89 for the first z-score. The second z-score, we're going to take 180 and then subtract 142.2 and then divide that by 25 and then we're going to round that to two decimal places which gives us 1.51. Okay, so now we know that in order to find the probability that x is in between 120 and 180 is the same thing as finding the probability that it's in between the two z-scores of negative 0.89 and 1.51. So if we draw our bell curve, okay, and we know that our mean is zero, okay, we can say that our first z-score is the following. We know that our first z-score represents negative 0 0.089 and then our other z-score is going to be 1.51. So in order to find the area in the middle, okay, we need to take the area to the left of Z2 and subtract the area to the left of Z1. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we want to first find what is the area that is to the left and I'm just going to go ahead and use the highlighter here. So what is the area that is to the left of this z-score. Okay, so we need to find the area to the left of 1.51. So let's go down here. Okay, so 1.51 represents the following area. And that is 0 0.9345. So that's 0 0.9345 and now we're going to subtract the area that's to the left 
of negative 0 0.89. So over here, negative 0 0.89. Let's move this over just a tiny bit. So I can move that over to here. So we should see that we get the following. 0 0.1867. So that's 0 0.1867. So when we subtract those two, we should get the following area, which means that the probability that X is going to be in between 120 and 180 is going to be the difference between these two. So let's take this in our calculator. So we got 0.9345, subtract 0.187, six seven excuse me and that gives us point seven four seven eight so point seven four seven eight is our result and what that does is that represents the area that's in the middle which is what we were looking for we were looking for the area that's in between here Recall that we convert this to 120 and 180 is the same thing between two and three minutes. So we can say that the area or the probability of cars that spend between two and three minutes in the restaurant's drive through is 0 0.7478. Let's go ahead and verify that in our problem here. So point 0 0.7478. And then check our answer, and then there's our result. Okay, and so let's go back and then just verify this by using Stack Crunch. So if we wanted to use Stack Crunch, then we would come in here, and now we're going to select between because there's going to be in between these two values. Now again, using the z-scores, we want the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one. So the one to the left is negative 0 0.89, and the z-score on the right is 1.51, and then let's compute. And there is our result, 0 0.7477. So if you notice here, when we're using a calculator, this one is slightly off, even though it would be correct because it'll take this value here. But if you notice here, using technology sometimes might have this number slightly off. Okay. And so therefore, we're going to go ahead and copy this graph. So if we wanted to use stack crunch, this is what we would get. Okay, and then if we wanted to use the calculator, let's see what we would get for that as well. So we're going to come in here and then we're going to go ahead and go to second distribution. We're going to go to normal CDF. Okay, now we know that the lower bound, because we want to find the area in the middle, is make sure you use the negative symbol, negative 0 0.89. And the upper bound is 1.51. Our mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. Let's select paste and then press enter. And you can see that we're going to get the same result as we got with our stack crunch calculator. Okay, so again, you can see it's going to be just slightly off. Um, when we're using the technology. Okay, and so therefore there is that answer. Okay, so now let's go back to our question. It says, would it be unusual for a car to spend more than three minutes in the restaurant's drive through and why? Well, it says more than three minutes, so we have to convert that three minutes into seconds, which we have already done, and we've already found the z-score for that. So let's go ahead and write that down, that, write that information down. Okay, they want us to find out what is the probability that it's more, that X is more than three minutes. That means that we're looking for the probability that X is going to be greater than 180 seconds, right? And if you notice here, we've already found the Z-score of that. So that means we want to find the probability that 
z score 2 in this case is greater than 1.51. So what that means is we're going to write our bell curve. Okay, and we know that our mean is 0. Okay, and we know that we're looking for what is the area to the right of 1.51. Okay, now remember, if we wanted to use our table, then we would need to find the area that's to the left of 1.51. So we know that the area to the left of 1.51 was 0.9345. So 0 0.9345. To find the area that's to the right of that, we're going to take 1 and then subtract 0 0.9345. So what does that give us? Well, let's go ahead and do that on our calculator. We get 1, and then we're going to subtract 0 0.9345, and that gives us point. Okay, and so therefore there is our probability. So we're going to say in part 3 now, that the probability that x is going to be greater than 3 minutes is equal to 0 0.0655. Again, if we wanted to do this on StatCrunch, we would do the following. We would come in here. We're going to go now to the standard, and we want to make sure it's greater than, and we're going to put in 1.51, and then you can see that we get the area of 0 0.0655. And then if we also wanted to do this on the calculator, we would come in here and go to second distribution, normal CDF. The lower bound is 1.51. The upper bound is 9999 with a mean of zero, a standard deviation of one. And you can see that we end up getting 0 0.0655 as well. So now let's answer our question. Our question says, the probability that a car spends more than three minutes in the restaurant's drive through is 0 0.0655. Okay, now note that an event with a probability less than 0 0.05 is considered unusual. But this number is greater than 0 0.05. And since it's greater than, then it's not unusual. So let's go ahead and answer our question. So we know again that the answer of our is 0 0.0655. So 0 0.0655. So it would what? It would not be unusual since the probability is greater than 0 0.05. Checking our answer gives us our result.